No, it's uh, and and it's it's a testament. By the way, saying all this is a testament to the power of the gun and why the gun, the arm, the right of self-defense, the concept of liberty from tyranny and defending that liberty being enshrined in the founding document of the country is that in uh, I, I use this in campaign finance uh, discussions, especially when I talk about why Citizens United is a great decision. But um, and I know that that'll piss somebody off uh, in the chat, I'm sure. But um, here's here's the thing, guys. Politicians do not act to limit their own power. They act to limit their enemies and challengers powers and ability every single time. Like in you can take any law and and trace it back to some politician going, this is a threat to me. You could probably find speeding as a threat to a politician's ability to get into to something before his uh, out-of-town opponent or some weird thing when you really get down to it. But guns uh, and the, the right of self-actualization and self-defense are so terrifying to a state, uh, to a state politician, because they remember that there was a time when we would go grab one of them and hang them or tar and yes. feather them or, yes. or beat them or whatever, that that mm -hmm. used to actually happen because mm -hmm. tyranny was intolerable because these people had just come out of it. And so this, this concept, when you, when you look at a gun restriction, always just look at who they're threatened by with the restriction. Mm -hmm. And it's usually uh, a particular opponent or a particular demographic. And you could see throughout the uh, the South during the slave, slave era and shortly thereafter during Reconstruction when these uh, restrictions on gun rights specifically for the, the freedmen who are now being made citizens by these amendments that these guys don't agree with. There's like the 14th Amendment and its original purpose was to actually just make uh, African Americans born in slavery who were not recognized as citizens to have that natural uh, birthright citizenship and then thus be able to take office. Well, they really worried about what would happen if those groups of of these people were going to suddenly be armed because they owned them a decade prior uh they were terrified of them by the way they do a good job in the decision of going through how we know what they thought at the time of the free of 1868 in the freeman bureau because one of the most common issues was making sure freedmen had guns to defend themselves against racialized mm -hmm. violence in the yeah. south and they do a great job of showing that mm -hmm. and one ancillary going back to the state monopoly, wanting to keep a monopoly on the means of violence as much as possible. In, in New York, one of the reasons this law is sustained is because a group of lobbyists emerged whose specialty was getting you these particular permits. So much so that it's actually portrayed in the show Billions, where they have a federal judge mm -hmm. agreeing to do something in a federal court case so that somebody will get him that right to carry a gun himself yeah. uh, to, to deal with it. I mean, that's so a lot of corruption happened in the meantime. They've oh, been yeah. people have been paying their way through, but Nick, even to go back further with what you said, to keep people out, of, like in Europe, hunting is not a common sport. It's an aristocratic thing. Yes, you know, there's a reason why. You don't want the commoners to go into the woods together and work on things like marksmanship. You know, even with the bow and arrow, you don't want them working as a team. You don't want them developing camaraderie. You know, doing marching. You know, walking long distances, living off the land. Well, that's because that's that's armies do that, and they know what armies do, and then they realize, oh wait, these guys are going to get trained and kill us. Uh, there's always been a fear of that. Um, the know, whole history he, of Louisiana Freeman. Yeah. When I was down there in New Orleans. He's he, he, mm -hmm. the number one thing he kept coming back to, and this was yeah. like a black. National. The South was always scared of an uprising. That was the thing they they were terrified of, all the well, way up until the Civil War. Yeah, I mean that's why there's all these restrictions about when slaves can have guns and you know the planter better be nearby and some other people near better be nearby. But like in New Orleans, they would keep freeing people, the, the different freedmen, because you had the unique cultural history there. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of a large part of the population that was biracial. They would say, okay, we'll give you all the rights except one. Make sure you don't have a right to keep and bear arms. I mean, that was their because they knew that was the most effective means to strip the state of its monopoly on the means of violence, which would undermine their ability to abuse their power. And it's, it's amazing how few guns it takes, um, how few yeah. guns it takes to bring a state to its knees. You know, we're, we're just a, li a few, like a couple weeks now past the 18 year anniversary of uh, Hemeyer, the killdozer up in Granby, Colorado, 
where um, it's it's a funny meme. I love, Marv. Uh, <laughs> I love talking about it because it's so it's so Uncle like Marv. this. it's this crazy story. But it's a crazy story because it was literally a guy with a bulldozer, some cement, some metal and and three guns. One guy, three guns, brought an entire government to its knees and terrified it so effectively. We're told over and over and over again that your guns will never be effective against the U.S. military, which is <laughs> insane if you look at any insurgency in the past, I don't know, ever. Yes, um, a bunch of illiterate dirt farmers in Afghanistan proved that wrong. Well, to be right. fair, those illiterate dirt farmers now have a shit ton of high-end American arms. Well, <laughs> well, yes. So, yes. So that also shows you there's an incentive to win because then I can end up with my battery of cruise missiles yeah, in I'm my just, yard. I'm just waiting for the, like the video of an Afghan prince. You know when they do that with like the Bentleys, they'll get like a bunch of guys to pull on the side of them, get them driving on two wheels. I want to see that with like an Abrams tank that we left over there. Uh, there's not one with an Abrams tank. There is an Afghani YouTuber who's doing gun videos from guns that he's collected that were left behind. I've seen them, a couple of those. It's he, awesome. he pisses me off the most just because I want every single gun he has in my collection. <laughs> <laughs> if those were going to be surplus, they should have been surplus here. Damn it. Well, and, and I, I'm not going to try to get too glowy here, but when people say like, oh, you know, you know, the government won't stop like you're the government is not going to drop a JDAM on some cul-de-sac or let some A-10 do a gun run and shred up, you know, a house full of soccer moms like they did that. The game's over. I mean, yeah. number one, number two, you know, all these, you know, all these people who are supposedly going to do their bidding have to sleep somewhere. They have to get their well, food from somewhere. And. Not, well, not no. to, that's why they want drones and uh are more ai weapons well just sit, up yeah well we followers but the whole idea of they have to sleep somewhere uh there's any number of fiction books non-fiction books out there that point out that that's how you fight an organized army when yes all you have as personal arms is yes they have to sleep somewhere i'm not saying you should read math 24 7 ben probably knows this name i'm not saying you should read the books by matthew bracken but well, you should probably read the books by Matthew Bracken. Or, or if you enjoy, enjoy the science fiction version, uh, Michael Williamson. He's actually a client of mine. Uh, That's a good one, too. books, uh, especially the anthologies, are basically a textbook on mm -hmm. a small armed force taking out a larger armed government. Mm. There's also a book by a guy named John Ross. Yes, called, yes. Yes. It has something Google to do with consequences. Google it. Yes. I can't remember if they were it, intended it, or it, unintended. No, it's very unintended, very unforeseen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, if you... And I'll put this right out there for the stream. Yeah. Uh, unintended consequences. You can find free versions. Uh, he's passed away, so it's not like you're depriving him of any money if you get the free version online. But uh, it's an interesting little book. Yeah, Nick, Very I'm sorry we we yeah. made this glow hotter than Chernobyl graphite, but we had to do yeah. it. You, you guys know the word. New followers that are all based <laughs> out of Virginia, Nick. Yeah. It's fine. Everybody can just go ahead and uh, everybody can just go ahead and subscribe to Potentially Criminal, and you definitely will be put on an FBI watch list. It's fine. Oh. Come on. Uh, well, I've been on one for a long on time now. You're not five watch lists at this point. You're not trying. <laughs> yeah. But the the whole idea that that guns are are like they're they're simultaneous they're it's the dual status, right? They're simultaneously completely ineffective and also the most terrifying things on the planet. Right. They must make them illegal even though there's no way on earth they could be used to stop, you know, a superior government or whatever from kicking in. It's like, okay, well, explain Uvaldi then. Again, like explain Pulse Nightclub, explain Parkland, explain Newtown, explain uh, the Aurora Theater shooting. If, if, if guns are simultaneously ineffective, but also the most terrifying things on the planet and a government could easily stop them, why can't the government ever seem to stop them when it's when it's necessary to who, do who so? Who was that uh, former cop in California? The one who went on a shooting rampage and basically oh, paralyzed? Dorner. 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 Dorner, yeah. Yeah, he... Yeah. Uh, he definitely got six stars out of that one. <laughs> yeah, um, but but you know, Jesus but Christ. but but when you're wondering, but when you're wondering about why the government can't stop them, that sounds very much like that'd be a great topic for a, a hush hush episode at <laughs> vivabarnslaw.locals.com. There you go. I, I mean, but it's, if you yeah. want to get more strand of the terrorism, the Boston Marathon bombing. Yes, that was two dudes with basically with pressure cooker supplies. Mm -hmm. Right, and it paralyzed it, it, an entire city. It's it's amazing how little Boston it takes. Boston strong though, yo. <laughs> and it's amazing how little it takes and that's why that's the real reason politicians are scared of guns. They will yeah. always couch it in the deaths of children because politicians 
it's the one thing that the average American cannot do so easily is stand on a smelly pile of corpses and tell you about their reelection campaign. But politicians will do it 10 times out of 10. It's, it's a neutral assertion of politician, by the way, it's not a left versus right thing. They will all stand on the corpses of children, feed you a line about how this could be prevented. If you just reelect me and let me implement some policy that I have with no data to back up how it could be prevented, no data to suggest that it would even be effective. None of the, and, and maybe this is important to, to remind people of this compromise bill that came out and why we have 15 cuck publicans out there uh, turning and, and, and signing on to this thing is entirely because of Uvalde. People are saying Uvalde, whatever the fuck it is. Town Who in cares? Texas. Yeah. It's uh, Texas. They're, they're, this thing has caused this uh, reaction from politicians who are are making this political point, who are making the the bodies of children their uh, their megaphone, and importantly, I'm pretty sure that none of the restrictions in the bill would have had any impact on the shooting at all. Not a one. That was Alito's point in his concurrence. He's like, basically, the dissent is guns bad, but they fail to show how any of the proposed reforms they're even talking about could possibly lead to the benefit they're claiming yeah. and by contrast we know lawful right to access to guns saves lives every single day best well, way to that, stop a mass shooter as trump used to say is to have some a good guy there with a gun yeah so, i mean that, it, that was most of what alito's thing was the other part was basically more or less thinly saying i can't believe you three are on the supreme court <laughs> hey <laughs> hey you, you yeah. leave just you leave the kevin james impersonator on the court alone she tries <laughs> oh hard is it Kevin James and drag? I've never been able to figure that out. Uh, <laughs> the uh, but the whole the whole thing is is just uh, it's it's baffling to me. Well, that this I, keeps coming up and and people keep buying into these talking points. It's it, it's it's because at the end of the day, Nick, if a politician says, "Oh my gosh, these people are coming after me," nobody cares. Even the people who are really political, like. Oh no! You're like somebody's coming after politicians. Like nobody truly cares. I mean, you know, instead it's like, oh my gosh, they're coming after kids. Okay, that's why people care. Yeah. You know, it, because yeah, if, if the politicians like, oh my gosh, I'm in danger. Nobody gives right. a shit. It's like right. you know. But that's that's what they're afraid of. They're they're afraid that an armed populace can't be um, can't be controlled. And we saw well, hell, we saw it with the. Uh, What's that? What's that weirdo family's name um, in Nevada and uh, the Bundys? The Bundys. Yeah. Holy shit! Again. Much respect couple, to them. A couple guys with uh, with some firearms. Literally, I mean, mm -hmm. completely, completely stalemated the United States government. They had and no they idea walked. what to do. And they yeah, walked they, on federal charges. The government's been after them forever, and they broke every rule in the book and. Thank goodness the federal judge finally enforced a few of those rules to stop. And the, and they walked the second time with their stunt in Oregon too. A yeah, bunch that, of them. That did. one was that one was less impressive. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah know, the, that's true. But I give them credit for trying. Random. They're, they're old school boys in Nevada. The they, wore, they wore the cowboy hat to court every day. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, there's a difference between the first incident where people showed up to just randomly protect them with guns, and the second one where people were shipping them dildos. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would agree. But, but so uh, people are bringing up Waco and stuff like that. Well, and and the, the thing to remember is that they will kill you is... over unpaid taxes. Oh, yeah. The, that's yes. Waco. That's yeah, all Ruby critical. Ruby Ridge is the poster. Just as Amber Heard is the poster mm -hmm. girl for red flag laws, Ruby yes. Ridge is the poster well, yeah, for what right. happens when those laws. They will in. kill you and your family over a quarter inch of pipe. As much as I love the Randy Weaver memes, I, I mean, he got completely screwed. And. You know, when you look at the details of it, what it really came down to was the court screwed up a court date notice. Well, the marshals, I think, had a hand in that one, ultimately. Well, right. It was the marshals. It was the ATF. It was the FBI. All of them rolling together. But he did nothing wrong, even being charged, whatever. He did it by the book in terms of addressing his court case, and the court fucked up. What's amazing is same sniper at both Ruby Ridge and Waco. Yeah. Yes. Yes, a, we're talking about you, Lon. We know who you are. Yeah. It's also more that, amazing that uh, one of those wonderful alumni got elected to be the sheriff of San Diego County. Mm -hmm. He can go fuck yeah. himself. Well, those and guys usually get rewarded. The system yeah. rewards well, yeah. those guys that do bad. Yes, although although he's, although that sniper still has an 
an indictment for manslaughter still out in the state of Idaho. So yeah, yeah. The, the point and that... also just you know. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, you know, and, and for those those of you guys who don't really know about Ruby Ridge, imagine getting in a shootout with federal agents, killing one of them, wounding a couple of them, being in a massive standoff with the FBI's hostage rescue team for a while. You go to trial, you win, and then the federal government settles with you for a couple hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, Cause that's that shows you how bad like... it got. Yeah. 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 Also, the... credit to Jerry Spence on that case. That too. The thing to remember, though, and the, the point I wanted to make with Waco, with Ruby Ridge, with any of these incidents where um, it doesn't go the same way as it did in Nevada, for example, for the Bundys, is that is the government's alternative to an armed populace is they have to drop the J dam on the bunker. They have to burn the building to the ground with children in it. And well, when they do that, they always like they they burn credibility with the public. And that's the key because Waco is not a popular government event. Waco is still it's it's regarded as an unfortunate incident in the best light. Uh, it's unfortunate the government had to do this in the worst lights. People recognize it for, you know, tyranny, because, I mean, some of those people in Waco likely crazy whatever disagree with them on i'm sure on everything I, they probably don't even watch anime very very uh breaded people i'm sure but the reality is when the government has to burn children alive it's a that's a cost and and those politicians who make that decision they know that every one of those is a risk that their house will be the next thing burning down um, that their children become in danger. And I don't endorse like the threat to, to politicians, but politicians should always fear the populace. And when they have to make an unpopular decision like that, they do fear it more. They fear it way less when there isn't a gun in the hands of the next guy. And if there were no guns, I think we'd see a lot more Wacos. That's the scary thing. Well, they would they'd no be guns, small Wacos we've been everywhere. that before. I mean, my whole thing is as a result of when people had no guns, but I just want to point out that everything you've said, just to tell the stream, does not apply inside the city limits of Philadelphia. They will drop a homemade bomb on your ass. Yes, they will. <laughs> <laughs> well, only so, in West Philadelphia. That bomb was born and raised. <laughs> so don't get too big for your britches if you're in Philadelphia and think that, oh, no, there's no way there's going to be blowback because they will gladly drop a bomb on you. But yeah, that, that's, I mean, the reality is, is governments want to disarm people because we're easier to control when we have no weapons. And of course, you know, that's the whole idea. Armed Jews don't go into cattle cars. Right. 